Wet blending is just like the name sounds. It's taking two or more colors and blending them together while they're wet. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of very specific techniques that are uh, within the wet blending category. We're going to talk about wet blending in general with brushes and then move into one of the more common techniques of painting wood grain by a, a wet blend technique. Most of my scene paint is mixed to that two to one mixture. So it's about the consistency of 2% milk for this technique. So it qualifies as wet blending if the two colors are mixed while they are still wet. And I can take any two colors and mix them. I can take this lavender to see what's going to happen with the lavender and the brown. And I can just mix them together and I get a nice brush stroke blend right there. And as far as a wood grain technique goes for a wet blend, for a simple wet blend that I might be coming back and drawing boards on and doing other detail work um, and something that's going to read as wood grain from a distance. This is sufficient. You don't need to do any more than that. If I do more than that, what I do is I start blending the two colors together. And now I don't have a wet blend paint technique. I have blended my two colors into one color that's the mix of the both of them. And it doesn't matter that I did this with the, the lavender, even though there's no wood grain that will really have that kind of lavender in it. Uh, the, it was a, just a sample of seeing how fast the blend happens and how little work you really need to do. If I were really trying to do a wet blend of a wood grain that looked like wood grain. Um, I have three colors here that I'm going to use. I have a brown, a mid-tone, I have a black, and I have a red because I'm going to try to do that red mahogany wood that tends to be one of the first things people think of when they do wood graining and, and wood on stage. Everyone always wants that mahogany red. So I want to work on a section, and the section is going to be a certain width, and I need to work on the whole length of the board. And I'll to talk about in a second what happens if you don't work on the whole length of the board, or the whole length of the material. This could be for wood planks on a floor. This could be for wood planking on, a, uh, on walls. It could be for furniture. If you have furniture, you get a little more complicated because you have to work around all of the little variations of the construction of the furniture, turned wood. It can be a little bit more challenging. So we put on our middle tone, our base color, our neutral. Usually it's going to be a brown because most woods are of that brown nature. And then I'm going to put some of my red into here. But I don't want to put the red in and blend it perfectly because I still need to put the black in as well. And then if I get the red blended perfectly, when I try to put the black in, the shadow color, it's going to wipe out my perfect red. So I don't need to be perfect with the red. I tend to have a technique where I just sort of slap some stuff in and and then it, it comes out in the wash when I do the blend. I'm going to do the same thing with my black. I don't need as much black. Usually the, a wood grain technique involves a three color situation. This black is too watery. 
and we'll work. I'm going to put the black in a little bit less because otherwise it's going to dominate, kind of filling in some of the cracks here. And then I either blend back with my original brown brush or I blend with a, an extra brush. And I get that all on the brush and then I actually come back through and I take advantage of my loaded brush. But I don't do too many passes because if I do too many passes, I'm going to wipe out anything that I actually do well. That's a quick and dirty wet blend. Now I want to do it in sections. And then the next section, I don't want to have a hard line, so I need to overlap a little bit. So I'm going to wipe out some of this a little bit. Wiggle it, make it uh, be a little more random because wood grain does have a randomness to it, a movement, a ripple. You're not trying to replicate that ripple with this technique. You're just trying to get your colors applied so that they can blend appropriately when you do the blend. Now it's real important that I start at one end of the board and I go all the way through the other end of the board. If I try to start in the middle, I'm going to put something like that in there and that looks very unnatural. It just looks like it's in the middle of nowhere. If I were coming back in and lining this with a plank, I could make that disappear. But if that doesn't look like intentional, that looks like a brush stroke. So Take that out again. And as we're doing this, I'm doing top to bottom and pulling it back. If I'm working on a horizontal surface like this, I want to keep my hand move movement going horizontally and consistent. And the best way to do that is not to sweep your arm and not to rotate your torso but it's to walk and keep your arm in place. Because even on a surface like this, if, if I was going left to right instead of top to bottom, I'm going to tend to do this arcing motion. And wood grain doesn't have that arcing motion. So that's why I was doing it the the other direction, but let's say I need to do it this direction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk with it and keep my arm. I'm going to keep my arm in place and I'm just going to move it. I'm going to just guide it across. I'm not going to do that sweep with the arm because that's going to put an arc in it. With this technique, I'm not actually trying to draw wood grain. 
I'm trying to suggest wood grain. And I'm not drawing knots. I'm not trying to do something hyper-realistic. I'm just trying to get the suggestion and the feeling of wood and have it come across from some distance. So again, if I, if I stand here in the center and I go from here to here, I'm going to do that. And that arc is not realistic. So what I want to do is I want to start here and I just need to drag. I'm just keeping my whole torso together and I'm dragging through there. And when you practice this technique, you're going to overblend at first. Everyone does. But overblending is part of the learning curve, and it's about learning how to do it and not do too much. And that is a simple wet blend. It's a great base for some more detailed wood. If you want to do more work on this, if we do some spattering and create some pock marks, it'll, uh, there are usually little spots in wood that are imperfections, so we can come back in and do other things on top to make it more realistic if we need to. We can draw planks. We can do a lot of different things.